Good evening and welcome to another edition of Special Assignment. I'm your host, Ashraf Garda. Tonight we take you into the heart of Johannesburg Prison, where we show you deeply disturbing images of a cancer-ridden inmate who has been struggling to get medical parole. The new medical parole law came into effect on the 1st of March this year, but controversy is set to follow the system. Producer Delphine Nikarak puts the medical parole process under the spotlight, and a word of caution, some of the visuals may offend sensitive viewers. Inside these cells of Johannesburg Prison's B section, this inmate is facing a sure death. Special assignment received these images from inside his cell that was recorded without his knowledge. He has stage 4 cancer, but his desperate attempts for proper medical care have failed, and now the cancerous growths have turned septic. While only a handful of inmates like former police commissioner Jackie Celebi have been granted medical parole under the new law that kicked in on the 1st of March, it has done little to sway public perception about the controversial process. They are worried about Celebi's uh, health and not about other inmates. They are also very important to their families. But a new constitutional court order can have far-reaching implications for the Department of Correctional Services ordering to keep inmates healthy inside its jails. For how long will people be sent to prison with the intention to go and die? This is one of the many overcrowded cells inside Johannesburg Prison's B section. The jail is widely known as Sun City, a swipe at the appalling conditions inside its cells. This is where Tsepo was incarcerated when skin cancer was diagnosed, but by then it had already spread to his lungs. Here, Tsepo found it more and more difficult to take care of the multiplying cancerous growths on his upper leg. It soon turned septic, leaking fluid throughout the day and giving off an unbearable stench. In these letters, he pleads with the prison's management to be moved to the prison's hospital. In a handwritten side note, an official refuses his request, citing his weak immune system as the reason. As the toilet is leaking, you can see it's all, it's all oil everywhere. Instead, Seppo has moved to this single cell. Its toilet leaks sewage onto the floor. He's bound to a wheelchair and it makes it difficult to keep the cell clean. At times the water in his cell runs dry. And at best he has this quality of water to keep his cancerous growths clean. Here Tsepo prepares to clean his septic growths. It's a task he has to repeat throughout the day. These bandages had to be bought by other inmates. And just imagine, this all look so. What if it's four days? You keep it for four days, my hands, huh? Four days? Yeah, I don't imagine. In fact, true to prison culture, Tsepo has to source and buy all his medical supplies from other inmates. But for now, he relies heavily on this barter system for his survival. Because, why was I suggest the is like lightning. Do you feel anything blood here? Very much like you feel in body or rubbing the last time I had to fight Linus for tablets, so I'm a pain killer. Now he has to. We decide to show this footage to prison rights activist Golden Miles Budu. 
so he's going to die in the end. Yes. To put it in his sibling. Yes. Sooner rather than later, he's going to that die. Is, we, nowadays, For more than a decade, he's been fighting appalling prison conditions. And here in and here out, such footages get exposed to the general public and uh, members of the Department of Correctional Services who are responsible and who are, in fact, getting away with it all the time, keep on doing it with impunity because there hasn't been any deterrent action taken against them. And I have to ask you this question with tears in my eyes. Where is this department going? In this confidential policy document, the Department of Correctional Services admits that inconsistencies existed within the medical parole system and that some inmates may have died because of these oversights. But it wasn't until a public outcry over the medical parole of Shabir Sheikh, former financial advisor of Jacob Zuma, that amendments were made to the act. Sheikh was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment for fraud. He served only two years of that sentence before being released on medical grounds for chronic hypertension. His case drew much criticism and speculation about his true health conditions. Criminal law expert Emmanuel Maravernika says the new law no longer requires a sick inmate to be dying. Anyone suffering from a terminal illness or anyone who's in a way been physically incapacitated by disease or any such um, ailment within the prisons and is unable to look after himself, live a daily normal life, um, they, they can apply for uh, medical parole. The most significant change in the new law is the creation of a panel of medical experts who sit on the medical parole advisory board. This means less power to treating doctors. The doctors will write what they motivate and this will be passed on to the case management committee who, who will pass it on to the me, um, medical parole advisory board and they will have the last say. But for many inmates like Tsepo, the new law has brought little hope. Here is a man that is dying, what are you doing about it and for heaven's sake, we will keep you your counsel and the minister and the Department of Correctional Services accountable. Are there double standards at play in the medical parole process? We confront the Department of Correctional Services after this. In 2008, Special Assignment brought you these images from inside Mordebi Prison, where a sick inmate had to be cared for by fellow prisoners, and another died inside its cells. In February this year, we also brought you the story of Bobby Le Peng and showed you the images of his last living hours. He battled the prison authorities for two years to get released on medical parole. He had full-blown AIDS and chronic TB. Yet authorities chose to dismiss his application. Instead, Bobby had to resort to appeal his sentence. He succeeded, but it came too late. He died a few days later. Since then, Bobby's sisters have been trying to get justice in their brother's case. They want to hold the Department of Correctional Services accountable for what happened under its old medical parole system. They must treat everybody equal, not who is who. There is now, he's, he's going to die peaceful among his family. He's at his house now, comfortable, whatever. Why they didn't consider about women? Well, I Bobby could also survive. If it wasn't a central prisoner, they, they closed the, close the gates for Bobby. He could really survive, 100%. We have been saying this since time in memorial. You need to be politically highly connected, so much so that the, uh, the um, uh, hills or the mountains, Himalaya mountains, would be a Sunday school picnic. You need to be well known. 
But chairman of the newly appointed Medical Parole Advisory Board, Dr. Victor Ramatesele, insists that despite the public outcry, Celebi's matter was above board. In the new act, the patient themselves can initiate the application. A member of the family, a legal representative, a friend or anybody can initiate the application, as it, as it happened in, in the case of Mr. J.S. Celebi. Further, in, in accordance with the act, the application arrived at our table after it was filled in ever so comprehensively by the doctors who were looking after him in the correctional facilities. And uh, we then received the application, perused it thoroughly, and sent three of our members to go and examine the patient, as we do with all the patients that we receive applications from, that we need to go out there and verify all the findings that have been put into the application. All those processes were followed. Since its inception in March, the advisory board had two sittings. Three inmates died while the applications were being considered. Three were not recommended for parole, while six were recommended. One of them was Jackie Celebi. Certainly, um, a lot of loopholes have now been plugged, where in the past the parole board simply looked at a, the motivation that had been presented by a, an individual's um, private even uh, medical practitioner who may have presented false information and which the parable relied on and released certain individuals in the past. But why then, even under the new law and the newly appointed advisory board, do sick inmates like Tepo still language inside our jails? We question the department's chief deputy commissioner for incarcerations about Tepo's case and he says it was never brought to their attention. Those specific measures before their granting. The case was never brought to my attention, but having have the information now, uh, we will follow up on this matter and make sure that indeed he receive firstly the medical treatment that he deserve, and if he is qualifying in terms of the conditions, one will really make sure that the processes are followed. We meet up with Seppo's brother, a construction worker from Hammond's Kroll just outside Pretoria. He says the family is concerned about his brother's deteriorating health. I don't even want to talk about the family because they lose hope. They are too worried. They, they're always crying, praying. You know, like, what are you going to do? I said, you know what? Only God knows. And I'm praying that he can come as well. In this specific case, I'm more than prepared for the department to look in the specific case and if there are people who hurt in the situation, surely we are taking action against our officials and we have a disciplinary system to make sure that our, our officials are taking care and execute their, author, uh, their, their mandate to look after the offenders and to make sure that all offenders receiving uh, human, uh, are in human detention. In February, we also brought you the story of Louis Gumede, an inmate in Durban's Westville prison. Louis has full-blown AIDS, and despite a recommending letter from the prison's doctor, he has been battling for two years to be released on medical parole. In an interview with Special Assignment, then Minister of Correctional Services, Nosiviwe Mapisa Ngakula, vowed to look into the matter. But six months down the line, Louis is still behind bars. We did interview Louis' family earlier this year, but this time around they declined a follow-up interview, claiming their brother was victimized after special assignments expose. I will not say he received a raw deal. What I'm saying is that we had two different opinions from two different medical practitioners. The one recommending medical parole, the other one did not recommend it. Now, in the old legislation, the process was of such a nature that the reports need to be positive. In other words, all the reports need to support the medical release. It's one of those many cases. Louis Gumete is not a connected comrade, he's not known, he is uh, an ordinary o offender like many other offenders. And it is said that uh, even the minister had to be moved to another portfolio and she has done absolutely nothing about it regardless of the fact that we were made to understand that the Department of Correctional Services was going to look into that particular case and many other cases. According to my senses, I should have uh, political uh, connections because if 
I put a request, they know it's me, then they will take the matter into consideration. But the fact is, they don't know me, I don't even have a membership card. So, see you next time. That's the way it is. Coming up, the Constitutional Court orders government to take better care of sick inmates. So, what are the implications? Several sick inmates inside Johannesburg Prison's hospital told Special Assignment that it's chronically understaffed, lacks basic medical supplies and at times administers expired medication. It all boils back to um, detection. Okay. Who has been identified as a potential candidate for treatment A, B and C? Um, it, it all starts with that. Hence you have that disparity. So it's not so much there's no equality, but detection at the onset um, usually is, is the main problem. And for most of these inmates, it is discovered too late. Um, they're way down the road in terms of their ailment, and um, you usually the remedy is through medical parole. It seems little has changed then since we brought you these images from inside Mordeby Prison, where sick and dying inmates had to rely on fellow prisoners to care for them. We don't have sufficient facilities in correctional centres to take care of them. Therefore, we're also making use of external health facilities. There's been mounting outrage over the issue of how inmates are treated inside our jails, and especially those who fall sick behind bars. Last month, protesters gathered outside Polsmoor Prison in support of a former inmate, Dudley Lee. He contracted TB inside jail and demanded compensation from the Department of Correctional Services. The Constitutional Court found in Lee's favor. If they took measures, he would not have contracted the disease. I, I, I write in a duty. No, I, I understand the duty. I, I'm fully with you on the duty okay. story. I fully so, the panel of judges found that the Department of Correctional Services is responsible to prevent inmates from contracting ailments like TB. Uh, the court did find that that was very unreasonable to simply rely on inmates to come and report themselves. An indication in itself that um, no preventative measures in certain uh, correctional facilities are actually uh, being put in place. Whether it's a short shortage of staff, maybe just absolutely no will. Um, it can be a variety of reasons. In general, one needs to admit that if you are not learning lessons of developments as well as oversight bodies, as well as uh, the information that we are receiving from journalists and you know, all kinds of sources, we will not be a learning organization, we will not be a transforming organization. Another high-profile case will soon be considered by the Medical Parole Board, that of convicted right-winger Clive Derby Lewis. He's been diagnosed with skin and prostate cancer, as well as a cancerous growth on his chest wall. His health has been deteriorating rapidly inside Pretoria's Maximum C prison. He was also diagnosed and subsequently treated for uh, hypertension um, in, uh, since the uh, end of 2010. Um, in January this year, the, he was diagnosed with uh, heart failure um, as a result of the hypertension uh, medication that was not working properly. Um, he was also diagnosed with a swollen uh, liver because of all the medication he is using. It's worsening because of his advancing age. Um, I don't think that a person uh, at this age, nearly 76, should be kept in prison in any case, despite whatever crime he has committed. While Derby Lewis has lost his general parole application and is still appealing that decision, many experts believe his medical application could be a litmus test of sorts for the new medical parole board. This amid public skepticism about political interferences in the process. Certainly, um, it will be up to um, his doctor or even the state doctor, whoever is treating him, to show and prove that the type of cancer that he is suffering from is indeed terminal. Okay. Um, certainly, if that can be proven, I do not see any particular reason why he should not be released. If he has applied for medical parole and um, the, the laws of this country, the rules and regulations of the Department of Correctional Services has been followed to the latter, let it be 
because we cannot have one set of rules for him, one set of rules for her, and the other set of rules for them. Good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon. How are you? But contentious issues remain under the new Act. One is that the Minister of Correctional Services can decide not to heed the advice of the Medical Parole Board. Some say this creates a loophole for political interference. The Medical Advisory Board is having an advisory role and a recommendation role. They are not deciding on the release or not. They are the Correctional Service Parole Board that will take that decision for all Sent, uh, offender sentenced for 24 months and longer and if you are being sentenced for sentences shorter than 24 months the head of the correctional center will take that decision and in cases where an offender is serving a life sentence those cases will be referred to the minister of correctional services to consider the advice of the medical parole advisory board i think that even if there is ample grounds to get him uh, paroled on medical grounds um, there will still be some political meddling, um, as we have experienced it in the ordinary parole. The medical requirements have now also been broadened for those who can be considered for parole. And as was the unproven allegations in the Sheikh matter, some medically paroled inmates can recover after their release. I wouldn't want to comment uh, about Shabir Sheikh because uh, I don't know much about, about his condition. What I know is certainly that he was released under the previous uh, medical parole um, situation or system. In the current system, um, the act is quite clear also that uh, if the condition of the inmate improves, that is not re reason for the patient to be reincarcerated. Get that mechanism into the act to prevent persons getting paroled on medical grounds, recuperating fully, and then not being able to get them back to serve the remainder of the sentence. If they do that, the general public outside will start to have uh, trust in this whole system of medical parole. The significant differences between um, the old uh, Section 79, uh, where you're told uh, by the legislation is that essentially the Department of Correctional Service were, were saying this is not a place for you to die, so go home and die. Whereas with your amendment, they're now saying this is not a place for you to live, go home and get better. Everything else happens in between there. Now, I'm sure you have strong views on this issue. So if you're tweeting, use the hashtag special assignment. You can also Facebook or email us. And join the follow-up discussion on my radio show on SAFM. That's 2.30 p.m. on Friday. Now, last week we brought you the harrowing stories of people who alleged that they were tortured by police. I've picked out these comments. Robert Mabusela tweeting saying, Poor investigative skills is the cause of people being tortured by cops in order to make them talk. And on Facebook, Sharon Skierpas Kruger wrote, the police seem to know that they can get away with these brutalities. This will sadly continue until stringent laws are brought in. Well, that's it from me. Join us again next week when we point out the issues that matter.